What's going on guys, this is Mike Noid, and today we are going to talk about new Super Mario Bros on the Nintendo DS. The DS was one of the systems I played the most on as a kid and I played a bunch of different games on it and one that I still remember very clearly was New Super Mario Bros. You know, I'm sure this game was a lot of people's first Mario game, especially those my age. However, my first Mario experience was the Super Mario World and Super Mario All-Stars bundle on the Super Nintendo. When playing all those Mario games as a kid in the mid 2000s, I never questioned how old these games really are. I mean, they were just fun 2D platforms games that never got old. I mean, you can fly and watch Mario twerk on a vine. It doesn't get better than that. But I guess they were old, which is why Nintendo released new Super Mario Bros on the Nintendo DS on May 15th of 2016. Super Mario World was the last original 2D Mario game, which was released in 1990, about 16 years in between. There was the All-Star Collection that updated the visuals of the Super Mario titles from NES. You had 3D Mario games, Super Mario 64, and Super Mario Sunshine, a handful of Mario spin-offs like Mario Kart and Mario Party, and re-releases of 2D Mario games on the Game Boy Advance. So Nintendo knew a new traditional Mario game would be huge, which I'm guessing is why they put new in the title of the game. From what I know, this was when Nintendo got obsessed with the new title gimmick. Nintendo just wanted us to suffer when trying to distinguish 3DS systems. New Super Mario Bros. is a traditional 2D scrolling platformer Mario game with all new graphics that you can play on the go. This game actually released about a month before the DS Lite system. But Nintendo knew that this was a sexier system than this, which is why the advertising for this game was shown on the newer hardware. I mean, can you guys guess how this game starts? Princess Peach is kidnapped again by Bowser Jr. Mario chases Bowser Jr. in each world until you get to World 8. The Super Mario Bros. series is known to have 8 worlds part of the main story, and while this game does have 8 worlds, you'll most likely come across six worlds. Worlds 4 and 7 can only be accessed by finding secret exits in certain levels, so it isn't required to play each world to beat the game. In fact, the fastest way you can beat this game is using the cannon in world 1 to go to world 5. Then you use the cannon in that world to go to world 8. All 8 worlds have their own theme. World 1 is your basic grassland world. World 2 is the desert world. World 3 consists of mostly water themed levels. World 4 is the poisonous forest. World 5 is the ice world. World World 6 are mountain themed levels, World 7 is the sky world, and finally, World 8 is the fiery hell. <laughs> Get comfortable with these world themes, since they're pretty much reused in other games of the new Super Mario Bros. series. Usually there's a secret World 9 or the famous Star World, but surprisingly this game didn't have one. The worlds can be easily navigated by using the touchscreen while you're in the overworld. The touchscreen also provides you a layout of the levels of the world and indicates locations of flying question blocks. These give you power-ups when you start the level they were flying over and they just kind of show up randomly and move around when you finish or lose a level so when you're in a level the gameplay takes place on the top screen while the progress bar the game score and item storage is on the bottom screen the goal of each level is simple you run through it to get to the flag post by jumping collecting power-ups and coins while either avoiding or stomping obstacles and enemies Mario games have always been known for fun platforming and this game is really no different Mario can do the basics run with the X or Y button and jump with the A or B button. At least that's the layout I used. You can change that in the settings. Mario can do the triple jump move, crouch to avoid hazards, ground pound, and wall jump. The game starts out fairly easy, but the more you progress, the more challenging they become. I mean, this is still a fairly easy game, but sometimes you slip up and miss a jump or get hit by an enemy. The enemies of this game consist of your classic baddies from the Mario series. You got Goombas, Koopa Troopas, Dry Bones, Cheap Cheeps, Piranha Plants, Boos, this asshole. There's also some new additions to the series, some even exclusive to this game, like Kabam and big dry bones. If you lose, you'll have to restart the level, or if you come across the halfway point, you'll restart from there. You don't know when you've reached the halfway point until you see the flag pop up on the screen and you can see it on the progress bar, so don't assume you passed it. You start out with a small amount of lies, but you can get more from finding a green one-up mushroom, collecting 100 coins, and reaching the top of the flag post at the end of the level. It's really hard to not get more lives. You have to actively try not to collect coins and refuse to hit question blocks. 
there's actually a small amount of power-ups in this game. You still have the super mushroom that makes Mario taller, the fire flower that lets Mario shoot fireballs, and the superstar that grants Mario invincibility for a short period of time. This game, however, does introduce three new power-ups, the blue shell, the mini mushroom, and the mega mushroom. The blue shell lets Mario become a Koopa shell, basically. I mean, it's cool when you want to go in a certain direction, but it's not the most reliable power-up out there. The mini mushroom is arguably a bigger gamble than the blue shell. Mario turns tiny and makes him lighter, which allows Mario's jump to be floaty and higher, and he can also run on water like Jesus. The downside is that Mario needs to do a ground pound to beat enemies and will lose if he gets hit once. It's hard to call these items power-ups with the flaws they bring to the table, but whether you like them or not, they are required to access secrets. And then the Mega Mushroom makes Mario a giant and crushes everything in his path. The power-up only lasts for a certain time period, but depending on how much of the level you destroyed, you get a certain amount of 1-up mushrooms. Power-ups are all over the place. You mainly get them from question blocks, but you can also get them from collecting all 8 red coins when you hit the red ring. If you start out as small Mario, you'll most likely get a super mushroom first, and if you manage to find another question block containing a power-up, while as average size Mario, you'll get the better power-up, most likely being the fire flower. If you come across extra power-ups, they'll be stored which can be accessed by tapping it on the bottom screen. Just know, if you go down a pipe and find a hidden area, the game is moved to the bottom screen while the map and item storage is moved to the top screen. It's a cool use of the two screens, but you won't be able to access that item until you return to the surface. The Mega Mushroom didn't appear too often in levels. The easiest way to get them was from the Mega Mushroom Toad Houses, located in the overworld. There are also red and green toad houses. Red toad houses grant you one of the other power-ups, and green toad houses consist of a minigame that lets you earn additional lives. If you want to go to these toad houses, you have two options. One way is from completing a level while the time ends in the same double digits. You'll know when you've accomplished this when you hear the classic Mario jingle. a random toad house will then appear. Another way is from collecting star coins. Each level has three star coins. Some are relatively easy to spot while others are harder to find. Star coins will also open up alternative paths to more levels so you can earn I mean, more star coins. But not every alternate path can be opened up with star coins. You'll need to find secret exits in certain levels. You'll know when it's a secret exit when the flag is red rather than black. You don't really know which level has a secret exit. You can just kind of guess if it's next to a level that you can't go to. If you're a big Mario fan, then you most likely know that ghost houses always have a secret exit. Sometimes secret exits don't lead to additional levels. They could take you to cannons which blast you ahead to other worlds like I mentioned earlier. Boss fights occur in fortress and castle levels. Fortresses have you go all the way to the top to fight Bowser Jr. You can jump on him three times or shoot fireballs at him. I mean, he's very easy to defeat. Castle boss consists of the bigger threats like Bowser, Dead Bowser, and Bigger Bowser, and Sun. There's actually a good variety of bosses besides those Bowser fights. They even brought back PD Piranha, which is awesome. I think this is a good time to talk about how you save in this game. So really the only way you can save your progress is when you beat a fortress or a castle level. Oh, and also purchasing a toad house with the star coins. The only way you can save at any time is when you beat the game. So just be aware when you play this game. So once you beat all the bosses, is, you'll save Princess Peach, which wraps up the game. The credits will indicate how much of the game you've completed by showing shots of each level, which is satisfying if you beat all the levels. You also learn how you can play as Luigi. You just need to hold the L and R buttons when selecting a save file. You don't need to beat the game to play as Luigi, just whenever you receive this information. After beating the game, you can now go to the Purple Toad House, which is located in World 1, where you can buy backgrounds for the bottom screen using star coins. If the game is too easy for you. There's a certain input you can use after completing the game. When you pause the game in the overworld, pressing LRLRXXYY will start challenge mode. This mode will prevent you from moving backwards like the original Super Mario Bros games, so try your best not to get stuck. And that's really all there is to this game. But we need to remember that the DS was a golden era for Nintendo, so there's some other modes to explore. Mario vs Luigi is a local two-player mode that has one player play as 
as Mario and the other as Luigi and try to collect a certain amount of big stars first. What's cool about this mode is that you only need one copy of the game. I mean, you can use two if you're extra, but you can just use DS Download Play. It's a fun little mode. I'm glad it's there. And of course, <laughs> <laughs> you have the infamous mini games. These mini games were available in Super Mario 64 DS, but I mostly played the mini games in New Super Mario Bros. 26 games are available in multiplayer and 18 in single player, each divided into different categories. Some of these are really addicting and utilize the DS hardware quite nicely. Pretty much all of these games are touch based, besides the Yoshi one, that one uses a microphone. And <laughs> come on, Luigi as the dealer is too too cool. And these mini games use multiplayer too. As long as one player has the game, up to four players are compatible. The mini games are just too good. You, you just had to be there back in the day to appreciate these works of art. And that's new Super Mario Bros for the DS. I mean, this is a very common game that's sought after by collectors and new DS owners nowadays, but it sold pretty well back in the day. So copies go for a pretty fair price. I mean, it's a Mario game. Of course it's popular, but I don't think people buy this game just to have it. I believe that this game is one of the best DS games out there. Hell, I would even go further and call it a must own for the DS. Whether you think it holds up to the OG Mario games is completely up to you. But the platforming is a lot of fun with additional features that adds more playtime. Even though I'm getting tired of the new Super Mario Bros formula, I give this game a pass not only because it did it first, but I, I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, just look what happens when you open the system when the game is on. I mean, that just screams 10 out of 10. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think of new Super Mario Bros down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. And of course, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. That's so cool.